Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff and Tammy McManus are here with me for the Football Show Monday to Friday. You can join us live at 4 o'clock or you can watch it at your leisure. If you download the app, you can watch it with the video at your fingertips uh, Monday to Friday at 4 or whenever you want. Uh, lots of people putting the show up and hitting the subscribe button as well, which we'd be delighted if you could do and come and join the football family. It's absolutely free to watch all the content. So, lots of football to talk about. Of course, looking ahead to a weekend of footy in the Scottish Premiership, all kicking off tonight with VAR in operation for the first time in a Scottish Premiership match. And we're all going to embrace it over the weekend. We'll get the thoughts of the guys on that. Predictions to come and you can give us your thoughts as well. A um, few bits of news I want to go through as quickly as we possibly can. Um, Nathan Patterson back running. Um, maybe ahead of time could be in for the old November 16th clash with Turkey for Scotland if he keeps the progress the way he's going at the moment. Yeah, he's definitely one for the future. And uh, any time he's come in, he's done particularly well. We have picked up a two or three injuries elsewhere, so that'd be good if we could get him back. Yeah, absolutely. I'm um, not just sure he's one for the future. I think he's one for the present, isn't he, Tom? He's there. Everybody wants him in. Yep, I think he's first choice. But then Aaron Hickey filled in in that right back slot and done really well. So yeah. it's great to have competition for places with young, talented players. Yeah, absolutely. A um, couple of fines uh, that have just come out over the afternoon. Rangers fined £35,000 for fireworks at Anfield. An offensive message, I think it's a banner, uh, and a return to play violation. Um, which uh, I'm not quite sure of the intricacies of it, but nevertheless, 35,000 is 35,000. I know the clubs must be just going absolutely mental behind the scenes. How many times can you warn your fans, you know, to behave and don't do these kind of things and they're just not getting through? And the, the fans really need to realise, I know £35,000 doesn't seem a lot of money in the scale of things, but at the end of the day, it, they'll have a pot there that they want to go and buy players with, and that these fines could hinder anything that they're going to do. Celtic fined £17,000 for pyrotechnics in Germany as well. I, I mean, some some of them actually start a crowdfund. That's what I was thinking there. You I know, think, I think that doesn't make it right. No, it doesn't make it right. Yeah, it doesn't make it right. Uh, and, and but they'll think that's that's fine as long as they're paying for it. It's not coming at the club's coffers, you know. If they put a, a crown fund or a just given or whatever it is, and, and they get all that money together and they pay it, they'll they'll think they're well within their rights to do what they're doing. Uh, but you know, UEFA are just going to keep fining them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ian Barraclough sacked as Northern Ireland manager. It wasn't a great run for him. Uh, Michael O'Neill had a really good uh, period as uh, the international boss, but Ian Barraclough just won four of 22 competitive fixtures, and it's just not good enough. No, it isn't good enough, and uh, they've got a ready-made replacement just waiting uh, if he wanted it. Uh, and Neil Lennon yeah. uh, what means to be seen whether he fancies it yeah absolutely I'm not too sure um, that would appeal to him so quickly unless you're g hold on <laughs> why, is he, why is he doing that why is he doing that <laughs> some, some, unless, some text him, some unless you're going to tell me differently well I've heard he is interested in it yeah Right, wow. Yeah. Well, he's interested in it. doesn't mean he's going to get it. No, well, that's true. He, hasn't he been was interested in it before. He hasn't been quoted for it, um, but that doesn't mean to say that he's not going to get the job. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I know he could have uh, he had a chance to get the Republic of Ireland job as well, Tom. I don't know if he would fancy the Northern Ireland. I know there's a bit of hassle the last you know, play well, with Northern I was Ireland. thinking. And, uh, there's already made the replacement already there, Michael, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> when we go back yeah. I think Barraclough's unlucky because Michael and he done an unbelievable job in Northern Ireland I think they're a it's a difficult job you know they're just trying to scrap and, and you know and get results but you know he went after O'Neill was, was very very tough and uh, he's paid the price but Stephen Gerrard's got a job as well he might fancy it yeah um, yeah absolutely we'll talk about that in a minute calm your jets country's <laughs> always late <laughs> uh, Stephen Gerrard <laughs> Steven Gerrard sacked um, as Aston Villa boss. I don't think it was any great surprise. A surprise. I think it was a case of uh, not if he's going to get sacked, when he was going to get sacked. Uh, and eventually Aston Villa have uh, brought an end to his reign there. His record ain't great, Ruffy, as you can see here. Um, 31 games, 8 wins, 8 draws, 15 defeats. Uh, and I think, as you can see there, the Villa fans had had enough. Yep. Yeah, and it, again, it's the, it's the panic situation. I know it's very, very early in the season, but 
these owners look at the money that's down there and they look at the money they're going to lose if they were to fall out of that league. It is unbelievable. And, and the teams that are coming up are coming up heavy-handed, you know, with all the money that they get. So they can't afford to drop out of that league and that's what happens. Yeah, Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp was talking about it. He reckons uh, he will um, obviously bounce back. So these kind of things can happen. And how is life? It's all about, we all get knocks here and there. It's all about how we respond. And um, you all know but Steve still better than I do. And um, he always came back and he will come back from that. No doubt about that. That uh, Things like this can happen. A um, lot of great managers out there um, uh, had to leave their previous clubs for different reasons. Some of the best did that um, <laughs> quite frequently during their career. Is he a great manager? Gerard? Uh, not I think he's a great manager. I thought he'd done a terrific job at Rangers. Um, I thought he put them back on the map in terms of Europe. He stopped 10 in a row. Um, you know, they were very, very competitive in the Europa League. I thought he deserved a move to the Premier League. Whether he should have took it when he did uh, remains to be seen. I think he'll look back on it now and think the timing could have been better. Uh, I think he would regret going down there when he did. He could have stayed at Rangers, where he was a hero, you know, and, and lauded by the supporters. But I just wonder if the Rangers fans would take him back. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think a lot of people, a lot of Rangers fans I speak to look at it and say there was a combination of Michael Beale and Steven Gerrard and, and of course that year just all went um, according to plan, roughly, because Celtic just had a season when they decided to do... Uh, you know, uh, almost taking a. It was like Celtic took a leaf. Celtic showed the Tory party how to do, how to do things over the case of case of a year, uh, and it just yeah. imploded. Yeah, it did. But you got to give them some kind of credit, you know, for particularly in Europe. You know, I thought they were superb. Yeah, that's a good point. But but he wanted to test his cell, and everybody says, well, you don't test yourself unless you test yourself down in England. Well, he's tested himself down in England at a, at a, at a good club, at a good club who gave him a lot of money to spend. And it hasn't worked. Uh, as Jurgen Klopp says, that can happen to uh, the best of managers. But uh, the thing is, Tam's talking about Rangers. But where where do you go after that? If you're Steven Gerrard, you know where. Yeah. What kind of club are you going to be pitching at next? Well, he's got, he, his stock is so high in England. I mean, he, he he walks about, and the regard for him is still there. I think so. I, I think we'll see Steven Gerrard in some capacity at a good job um, in the not too distant future. A um, couple other little things that have hit the news that I wanted to get your thoughts on before we talk Scottish Premiership. One of them, of course, was Aberdeen's new proposed stadium and their financial figures set to come out. Um, it's the beachfront stadium now. Um, I don't know if you look at that. I mean, by the way. Aberdeen looks as if it's like Miami in that picture. I may go up there for a weekend now. Um, that Some filters on that picture. I was way. just about to say to you, where are the, se where are the seagulls actually just going? There you are, hold on to that. Um, anyway, it could take a decade, could cost them 80 million. They want to host concerts, rugby matches, under 21 games, women's football as well as the main football. And it could bring a huge amount of money to that area at the beachfront, which is, you know, obviously in need of it. Um, and Dave Cormack also just highlighted the fact that they reckon they'll have four million pounds in operational losses in their financial figures. But he says he's willing to cover the shortfall um, just to keep Aberdeen competitive. Yeah, that's good. That's the kind of owner you need, somebody who puts the, their money where their mouth is. It's a big, big plan. But again, it seems to be, I'm only going looking at it from the outside, it looks to be all about the council. It's all about the city, what the city want. I think the city want the them decision. to go to Beachfront rather than Kingsford. Yeah, well, obviously, they, they, there'll be a huge backing, financial backing, whatever they decide, because as you've just said there, it's not just about Aberdeen, it's about the whole, the whole community and everything. So you really need everybody pushing in the right direction, because all you need is a change, a change of government and they, the next... People who come in can say, no, we don't fancy it. Aye, OK, God, you put a right dampener on it, eh? Just when we're getting excited about that, I have to tell you, I really would like it to see it at the beachfront. I think it would be fantastic rather than that big journey all the way to Kingsford. Um, but uh, we'll wait and see if that transpires or not. Here's the Premiership fixtures for the weekend in Scotland. We're looking forward to it. It all starts tonight. Hibs against St Johnston. It's Hearts against Celtic. The early kick-off tomorrow. Kelly Ross County, Motherwell Aberdeen, Rangers against Livingston and St Mirren 
against Dundee United and I just think it's fabulous time largest home support in 30 years for Hibs against St Johnston um, ok the record's not good for the two of them going into this match I think Saints no wins in the last three Hibs no wins in the last two and that was off the back of four straight wins so but nevertheless everybody's in there and they're all getting ready for VAR yeah, I'm excited to, to watch the game tonight. I think that the Hibs have got to take a lot of credit. I think the owner, uh, the marketing staff at Hibs, I think they've got to take an enormous amount of credit for for going with the pricing. £10 and £5. I think that it shows you if there's sensible pricing in this country, people will go to the games. You know, £25, £30, pounds, it's, it's too expensive for people, especially now with the cost <coughs> of living crisis that we're, that we're all in. You know, £10, £5, pounds, very affordable for people. You'll see what nearly 20,000 there tonight, a huge crowd. Hopefully, Hibs put in a performance for them because the last time they'd done a, a fiver a game uh, a fiver and it was nil-nil against St Johnson because I was at the game yeah. and uh, the marketing people were pulling their hair out so were you working at the game that day? I was working at the game there was an enormous crowd and you could see the, the, the glum faces after it with the marketing staff who'd pushed it you know to try and get the sale out which they'd done so I hope tonight uh, for the guys sake and, and for the whole club that Hibs put in a performance score a few goals and then some of these people want to come back. And that's, that's what it's all about, attracting them. They enjoy the game. You put on a spectacle, you score a few goals, you win. And hopefully you'll get a couple of thousand of them back. Here's a question for you. It's, a, it's a slightly uh, loaded um, because obviously you two are slightly biased. But on the basis of that huge support and the backing they're giving, are, are Hibs the biggest club in Edinburgh? Oh, I would say yes. Uh, I know Hearts fans would say What, what I would say is that I, I believe that Hibs and Hearts are bigger than Aberdeen. I, I truly believe it. I think they've got a bigger support. I think they've got a better support. They've got better stadiums. I believe they're bigger than Aberdeen. Hibs and Hearts, you can argue all day who's the biggest, who's not. I think both of them are equal. When both of them are going well, I think you'll find they're, they're taking three and 4,000 to away games. When they're going well at home, there'll be a sellout. So I don't think there's anything in, in between Hibs and Hearts, but uh, I think both of them are bigger than Aberdeen. And I know I'll get stick for Aberdeen fans for that, but from what I've seen over the last 10, 15, 20 years playing <coughs> and supporting, uh, being at games I think Hibs and Hearts are bigger than Aberdeen yeah uh, was it easy to answer that question the way it suited you rather than the one that I actually asked you I don't know but <laughs> I don't, listen I, 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 you know as a Hibs man I'll go, I'll go Hibs are, yeah. Hibs are bigger than Hearts but I, I'm not sure that Hearts will, well, Hearts supporters will believe they're bigger than Hibs but I don't think there's anything in it yeah Ruffy I think it depends on who's the most successful yep. yeah who's winning yep. who's winning you know, and the other thing is... Is uh, it that close? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. I think both of them, on a good run, should be getting 17,000 there. Mm. You know, and, and they will. I remember the time when Alec McLeish went down to the Championship and he was on a winning run and he had 17,000, 18,000 every game. Uh, I do agree with Tam. You have to remember that Hibs and Hearts are split in the city. Mm. Uh, if there was only one team... Yeah, in Edinburgh, you know, whereas oh, well the old Wall the old Wallace yeah. Mercer trick. Yeah. Well, that was never going to that was never, that was never going to happen. <laughs> um, do you think they're bigger than Aberdeen? Yes, both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just thought I'd get your thoughts on it. Um, and I think uh, Gallant says Hearts have got more fans uh, as well. Uh, Ian Miller says Hearts are the bigger team uh, Jimmy Duff says Hearts are far bigger um, It's a good, interesting one Listen, we want to see them all um, Anton has just decided um, Hibs all day um, Remember Anton, if you are posting a message Try to keep it clean and decent <laughs> Just thought I'd say that Or oh, this is not the show for you <laughs> Well done Tama. thought I'd keep that in for you um, But <laughs> So, some of the comments about Hearts and Hibs uh, none too complimentary but nevertheless it's Hibs against St Johnston where's your money going on that one uh, Ruffy? Home advantage for me uh, and, and the crowd obviously uh, I th we all thought St Johnston were going to get a grip of themselves and, and they are better than what they were there's no doubt about that but they're away from home they used to have a good re record against Hibs, didn't they? Mm -hmm. uh, I just think Hibs. They're titling the cups a couple of years ago. Uh, Hibs have got to win this one. Hibs yeah. have got to, as Tam said, if there's the full house in there, they've got to go away with a win under their belt because it's a long season ahead, and uh, that would just keep them all on board. Uh, wouldn't it be interesting tonight if there wasn't any VAR? <laughs> if we don't go to VAR at all. If there's no call for it. Yeah, yeah, it would. <laughs> <laughs> 
Eric, <coughs> Tom, it would make it. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be hitting days off. It's only days off. It would make it. Come back. Come. <laughs> it, it would make it as flat as a pancake, wouldn't it? I, I got to look for a big decision. It may go to VR yeah. to get a wee bit of excitement in the game, but uh, Hibs at home this season unbeaten. I think they're a, they're, a, they're a strong team at home, Hibs. And I, th- mm. I think they win the game comfortably. I think they're averaging, as I said, 20 shots a goal uh, a game. Even at Celtic Park, you know, they're a lot of shots. So I think that Hibs are due to give someone a wee bit of a tanking, and it might be the night. Yeah, well, with three wins and two draws, he's right at home, unbeaten at home. Need it tonight. I've got Hibs to win 2 1. I've got Hibs to win 2 0. 3 0 Hibs. Okay, 3 0. Wow. Well, emphatic. Uh, I'm sure the Saints will have something to say about it, despite the fact they're not exactly in good form. What's your prediction on that one? Thanks for joining us on the football show, and thanks to so many of you who are downloading the podcast as well. There's lots of very interesting things uh, coming up. Uh, Of course, we've got a couple of new um, Taylor's dummies, Ruffy. I don't know if you noticed in the back there. Uh, Obviously, for some of the merch that we we sell, Tam obviously clearly thinks we give it away for nothing. Um, But I thought I'd put that up there just to, just from memories of guests that have come in here. Gary Harkins is a good lad. Yeah, it's great that you've got a strip for the only team in Glasgow. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it's a lovely strip and it's a, a lovely player's jersey. Uh, that you've got uh, a person that we don't see a lot of the ability that we like to see on a football park yeah. he had oozes of it lots oozes. of it yeah he, he used all of it noodles yeah. noodles yeah. He, he used he used all <laughs> the class noodles. that you were looking for <laughs> but he had uh, talent in abundance um, you know Gary still stay in touch with the guys great lad um, thanks to so many of you who are offering uh, the, your opinion um, George Ward says Celtic fan I agree Hibs Hearts bigger than Aberdeen uh, by far Hibs and Hearts though George says maybe 50-50 um, ok uh, it's a good arg- good pub argument the only thing missing here is the beer tomorrow talking about beer Hearts Celtic we've been a hospitality Ruffy unusual for me not to be working are you going through the game? I am going through uh, with uh, a few um, new acquisitions for PLZ and we're going through there doing a wee bit of hospitality with some old jambo friends of mine and uh, we're going to sit there at the at the hospitality have what Ruffy has every week which is a, a starter a main course and we might so even throw it a, a lot of, uh, you'll obviously see a lot of Hearts fans through there aren't yes. they, your prediction for the game tomorrow oh they'll get pumped <laughs> Oh, they're going to get, they're going to get battered. <laughs> but, but, but thankfully, thankfully, I'm, my nephew lives in Edinburgh. I'm taking him with me just in case it all kicks off. Dan, you need you need honours in case it goes mental. Um, I, I'll tell you one thing about it though. Hearts Hospitality is fantastic, Ruffy. It's a great stadium, and they've won awards. Yeah, they've done you know? it all up. It's very professional. Everything anybody's been there raves about it. It's it's great, and that that's as a club uh, as big as Hearts. That's what you need. You need. You know, everything going on in the, the stadium that's positive, and certainly they have changed it for the better, there's no doubt about that. I would say that the, the director's box is just a wee bit too near the park because it's not oh. under the protection of the stand. Yeah. So if it's raining I know. and the rain comes in the way you, you get you get away. I think, I, I think you've got a good point. The press box is, is, is a great press box, but... The way they've, they've built that stand, I think, I think the do. rain lashes in on that perspex and it's they, mental. They kind of threw it up very quickly, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, and what, what annoys me about it is the, the, the two dugouts are known in the middle of the park. I don't know if my OCD is just... Is I don't know if it's changed now, but when I first yeah. done it, it wasn't, it wasn't in either half. Yeah, well, um, I think it's a wonderful stadium. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I do. I, do, I, do. I, I love it. I mean, it's it's easily one of the top stadiums in the country. Um, but uh, the atmosphere is brilliant. I love the fact that you, the, the fans go mental for a throw-in, <coughs> which is what you want in a game. Uh, as far as the match itself, this is seventh against first. It's Jota and Turnbull out for Celtic. Um, and, of course, they'll sample VAR. Ange Postacoglu was asked today whether... Uh, it would change his mindset on the coaching or indeed the players' mindset as they go into the match, the first one with uh, VAR in the Premiership. Mate, I'm totally ambivalent to it. I, I think the best outcome for VAR this weekend is if we don't use it, it means all the decisions are right, but it's not like it's an exciting new signing or something. <laughs> that stuff doesn't rock my boat, mate. But I know others are really excited by it. Good luck to them, but I doubt anyone's... Uh, buying an admission ticket to see what VAR does this weekend. I think they'll be there to watch the football, hopefully, anyway. 
Yeah, no. well, there's a custom pie from Andrew. <laughs> Anybody getting excited? Hold on excited to this. That's it. We've yeah. not noticed this. The road sold it <laughs> on the back of it. Yeah, that's that because think. it's a tenor off No, it. but I think a lot of people are going there as well. That's all they'll be talking about is VAR. No, be no, 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 Ruffy. No, no, Ruffy. Ruffy, Ruffy. No. When the tenor was announced, the fans were buying yeah, it. I know, but they're not going to be talking about it. No, they'll be talking about it, but it was announced after there was a stampede for tickets. The, th the, the thing was going to be sold out whether there was VAR or not. The point of it, they'll all be sitting there. Friday night football the as well. One. They'll all be waiting on it. Yeah, or well, it may well be, but um, Ange is not giving two hoots about it. Uh, of course, the one thing that a lot of the Celtic players have to wait for, it's interesting for you guys. Tam, did you have a manager who, when he came in, uh, maybe a manager on the Friday that would announce the team, or a manager <coughs> on the Saturday that kept you all waiting? Uh, both. Both. I I would prefer to know the team on a Friday, uh, so you know your play. I think you some sometimes you can tell because usually it's a, a, you, do, you do a bit of shape on a Friday. Yeah. And it's usually a starting eleven via the, the reserves, and so you can get a feeling who's going to play. But Alec McLeish was always one who would name it on a Saturday morning at pre-match. So you would <coughs> he had the, the the flip chart and the, it wasn't the over obviously, and he would say Tam, kind of word be if you were playing the week before, you know you were dropped. So you just, it's been big, Alec used to come into the, into the lunch, you used to just put your head down. I remember doing it Big Yogi, <laughs> Big Yogi, he done it to Big Yogi once and Big Yogi was enough, he's not. He uh, said, Yogi, can I go word with you? Big Yogi came in, oh, it's me dropped, I'm dropped. So you know if you get pulled from McLeish, but I think you'd rather know on a Friday. Yeah. Uh, rather than a Saturday. Malik McLeish told me I made my debut at Tynecastle in a derby game, first start for Hibs uh, against Hearts. And he told me about an hour before the game, because I think he knew if he told me you get nervous. If he told me the night before, I would have been a nervous wreck. But he told me about it before, by the way, you're playing today. Just after the cuff like that. Yeah. So I'd need time to think about it. Yeah, because Ange, uh, I did ask him in midweek about it, you know, and you know, and he just basically said that he puts the, he puts the aye, team up, aye. get on with it, deal with it. On the Saturday or the Friday? On the, on the Saturday. Uh, it used to be Friday at Thistle. <coughs> Dennis McQuaid tells a good story. He got transferred to Hearts uh, with Willie Ormond. And we Wally Ormond used to come in like an hour before it and put it on, on the dressing room. And he put it on and Dennis was number 11. And Wally Ormond came into the dressing room. <coughs> he says, what are you doing, son? He says, I'm number 11. Oh, clerical error. He says, you're known as God. It's your worst nightmare. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen oh, a few oh, players oh, doing that, oh, by the way, before oh, the team's announced, just getting ready. Oh, like they're oh, involved. And, right? and then the team comes out. I had done it once when I was about 19, 20. I'd been on the bench the week before and McLeish came in and he uh, said subs and I had, had my shorts and I had my tap and I off and it was the walk of shame. Oh, that is. <laughs> Slowly pulling your socks back That's on. That's being overly optimistic. Putting your tracks it, back yeah. on <coughs> and you're sitting up in the stand. But uh, I think you can tell a lot of clubs traditionally do shape on a Friday. They'll do the set yeah. pieces and you, you, you kind of know who's playing and who's not. Well, but by the way, Celtic have guys who are scoring hat tricks are not getting a game. Greg Taylor mentioned uh, that he fully understands that the players uh, are buying into what the manager's doing. We've got a strong squad for that reason. Um, every player naturally wants to play every game, but it's probably not possible unless you're Cal. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um, it's, uh, we all want to play, but equally we're understanding that there has to be rotation from time to time. OK, um, if you want a game, you score goals, you're not necessarily playing the next week. Uh, Robbie Nielsen has to come up with a game plan to get at Celtic. A lot of the players, Alec Cochran has mentioned it as well, uh, are well aware that if they're going to have to do something in this game, they're going to have to get right in Celtic's faces and make it a real battle. Obviously, they want to be wary of what happened the last time. Two Hearts players sent off in the game. Cochran was one of them. Uh, and Robbie Nielsen is well aware as well that even if the 11 don't breach the Hearts' defence, the squad can make an impact at Celtic as well. Yeah, look, there are, there's no doubt they're a, a very good starting 11, but also a very good you know, group in the background. So you've got probably 18, 20 top international players there. So you know they, they've obviously got their um, Champions League game on Tuesday. So whether they rotate the team a little bit, I don't know. But whoever comes in will be a, a top player, and we have to be at the top of our game to match them and try and get the three points. Yeah, have to get in their faces. It's, it's an absolute stonewall certainty, Tom. That's the way to play them. Yeah, you, you can't stand off Celtic. You can't stand off either of the old firm teams. Uh, even when I was playing, you've got to get in about them, particularly at home. It's more difficult away from home. You know, you've got to kind of be shaped and, 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 and sit in and be disciplined. <coughs> but at home, go and get after them. Go and have a go. Yeah, that's what your fans will demand. But 
when Hearts do that, and I'm sure they will tomorrow, there'll be gaps at the other end for, for Celtic to exploit. But I think whatever team Celtic put out, they'll be too strong for Hearts. I just think that Hearts, as I've said to you in the last couple of weeks, I think they play in Europe next week as well, next Thursday. The, the, the Sunday, the Thursday games are killing them, and they need to get out of Europe. But I think Celtic will be too strong. It'll be interesting to see the midfield battle. Um, I like the boy Cammy Devlin. He's, he's battling away at the moment, trying to play himself into the Australia squad for the World Cup. So he is really going to put himself about. I just hope he keeps you know, his heed, uh, as they say, because he gets sent off in the match against Rangers. So this is another battle, and he's possibly at the moment up against the... Um, the best midfield in, in, in Scotland, is it fair to say, even yeah. though they don't have McGregor, mm-hmm. who's the best midfielder in the country? Yeah, I, thought I think they're the most dangerous midfield, you know, and, and if you're giving them all the possession, which Celtic generally have the most of the possession, they're the ones that are pulling the strings, yeah, and, and they support the front three or whatever it is, and they're, they're in there, they're running about, they're causing problems. The Hearts have got a problem, if that's the theory that they're going to get in about Celtic, you've got to make sure that the persons you're telling, uh, who you're identifying, that they can screw the head a wee bit and not do what you're talking about. Because sometimes when you get a player who comes out like a, a raging bull and all of a sudden they're sent off in five minutes, it's got to be like controlled. And the only time that Hearts have had success against Celtic is when they have been in their faces, you know, particularly at Tynecastle. Mm. They've got results. It's, it's a tight pitch as well. You can yeah. get, you can get Magic, most of the it? people. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, I've got Celtic to win 3-1. I've got 2 nothing Celtic. I think 3-1 as well, I think. Yeah, OK. Uh, thanks to so many people who are obviously reacting to some of the stuff we've, we've got on the programme and uh, quite a lot of people are saying maybe uh, Stephen Gerrard's next op- option is to join PLZ. Well, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure that would be a good idea. Could we take him on? Um, the only thing is, pundits tend to come on here and they don't get fond over so, you know, would he be used to getting leathered when he's sitting on the couch, by the way? He wouldn't get an easy run, by the way. That 25% win record at Villa, just slaughter him when he comes on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ruffy, could you, could you handle Stephen Gerrard sitting on the couch? He's quite a nice guy. Yeah? I think he'd be okay, yeah. Would you be? Would you? Be, would you be? No, would you be in of them? Not at all. No. No, no not at all. How many World Cups he beat me? Good point, actually. <laughs> two, two, pretty close. It well, might. In fact, I'll tell. I'll tell. I'll tell you one thing. It's such a good question because I reckon. Uh, I reckon. How many World Cups? A good question, isn't it? How many World Cups has Stephen Gerrard beat? Bobby just says that everybody did not he? I know it's everyone. I, I, apart from Kenny. Yeah. Um, right. Because obviously uh, the the bulging Kenny, I think it was Kenny seventy four. He was at. I think Joe Jordan's got the most. I think. Yeah, <clears throat> seventy four, seventy eight. Kenny was an eight. Was Kenny Kenny in eighty two? Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't in eighty six, was he? No, he? Was he only been to two years? He pulled, he, no, he's been to three, but he pulled out in eighty six. Did he? Um, he was player manager at Liverpool at that time. So there you are. Yeah, we could take Gerard on. We'll take them all <clears throat> on. I'll, I'll give him my phone and see if he's up for it. Really? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, Motherwell against Aberdeen is a belter. Looking forward to it. Eighth against fourth. And uh, uh, of course, it, it's going to be absolutely massive uh, for Motherwell. They want to try and climb the table. Not too many points between uh, Aberdeen and Motherwell. Only three, if my memory serves me correct. Um, so it's a chance for Motherwell, if they can, uh, to get their uh, on joint uh, fourth if they can uh, get a win at Fir Park. Uh, Stephen Hamill, certainly, uh, that's the intent. It's a huge game for them. Yeah, huge, huge game. Um, just puts a little bit more emphasis on it as well that, um, you know, a full focus was on this, but we obviously knew the, the magnitude of that game, um, home game. The form at home hasn't been what we wanted it to be so far this season. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we're fully aware of how big a game that is now. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting one because Aberdeen, out with Celtic, are, are banging goals in. Uh, I mean, if you, uh, yeah, absolutely. So and they're away. And they're away. I've got, I've got them to win 3-2. No, nope, I fancy Mullo. I, yeah. I, I fancy Mullo. I think Aberdeen are, are not the same team away from home. Uh, their away record's poor this season. Battered at Dundee United, 4-0. Yeah. I think Mullow showed signs against Celtic. I know it was 4 nothing during the week, but I, th- I thought they, sh- they created a few chances. thought they knocked the ball about well. Uh, they had a great record against Aberdeen last season. I think that yeah. was the games that kind of got <coughs> Stephen Glass to sack. You know, they, they beat them a few times at, at Fur Park, Aberdeen. So. It's a good point, Tam. One win, one draw, three losses. Aye. Aberdeen. Aye. So, aye. 
I think I fancy my I've just got a feeling for them 2-1 Ruffy? No I think Aberdeen as you said there four goals uh, against us and four goals a week before I think there'll be confidence will be high I think Mother will get a bit of a chasing uh, with Celtic I think uh, energy levels will, would be struggling a wee bit with certain players but they have got home advantage but I think, I think I've stuck my neck out I know Aberdeen have got a poor away record this year but I think I've went for Aberdeen to win 2-1 yeah yeah but well, you can't remember no. well I'm having a look at it right now and you've got Aberdeen to win 2-1 yeah. so there you are ok um, Rangers against Livingston uh, good game uh, to look forward to as well because Rangers fans booing the, the team off in a win to get them into a semi-final of a League Cup uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, what's going to happen over the 90 minutes at Ibrox because again if you're wanting a team to really uh, start to play fluent football and entertaining football the last team you want to see across there is Livingston Giovanni Van Bronckhorst uh, quick to acknowledge what's been happening over the last couple of weeks and especially in that League Cup game he says we need to improve from Wednesday particularly the last 30 minutes we're on a good winning run in the league and we want to continue we need to entertain also and we will look to improve we want the fans to leave the stadium after a convincing win the intensity needs to be there not only for part of the game you know as a manager or player of Rangers you always have to win in a convincing way that is the standard we all have to achieve so basically Giovanni is re he reckons it's, it's got to be entertained as well as win mm -hmm. yeah and I, I think the problem for him now is I don't think he knows what his best 11 is you know he's trying trying this player trying that player trying him and, and it's not clicking the way he wants you know but I, I think at home I think Rangers are just, and I know about Livingston, I know they're, they're, they're stubborn and they all dig in and they, they all fight for each other. But I honestly think if Rangers score in the first 10 minutes of this one, I think they'll be back to where they were. Yeah? Yeah, I, I really do. I think they'll have, have so much... Have you seen signs of that, Ruffy? No, I, I, I bet they'll have so... Sometimes you, you have so much possession and you're just not hitting the back of the net. But all he needs is one or two players to, to hit the back of the net. And I, I, I just feel Livingston away from home aren't, aren't the same team they are at home. I know they can sit in, but I, I think for Rangers it's another, I think it's 3 nothing. I've went. Yeah, it's an emphatic win uh, for them. Yilmaz out with a knee injury. <coughs> I can't believe that. So soon after us all bumming him up and saying, looking forward to seeing him get a little run. Knock back for him. Kamara out with an ankle injury. Yeah, that's a blow for, for Yilmaz. I thought he played well the other night. I thought he was one of the brighter performances for Rangers. I just looked at Rangers the other night and I've looked at them against Motherwell at the weekend as well. That's just, there just seems to be something missing for me, Peter. I don't know if it's the players. You know, the, the Rangers have, have got an identity. They had an identity under Steven Gerrard. You know, where they pressed. I, I don't know what Rangers are doing at the minute. I don't know if they're a high press team or they're a low block. But, but what do they do? I think they have too many players going through the motions. The same the other night against Dundee. As Ruffy says, he's still searching for that, that right blend in the forward areas. You know, he's, he's, he's swapping the wingers, you know, Tillman, you know, who's going to play wide? Kent, come back in. Will he stay on the bench? You know, so they're just searching for something. And I think they're only one bad result away for, for the Rangers supporters. Really, really calm for, for Gio's head. Um, I really do, because <laughs> the performances haven't been up to scratch. They're still winning games in the league, but I think when they come up against better quality, they'll get punished. Uh, I think there could be a wee upset here. I've, I think I've went for Rangers to win. But oh, hold on a minute. Is that an upset then? No, I went for Rangers to win, but I just thought I think <coughs> I went for two one to Rangers. I think this would be a narrow win. I think that makes another worst uh, the last team they want to face. So that's not an upset. I know, but it could be. <laughs> it could be. I went for Rangers two one. I was very very close. By the way, to going for one each, like a few others on the chat. Ruffy, young Ruffy. You know, <laughs> honestly, it's, it's a it's seamless the way you're going now. You know, you'll start to play ten. Two one Rangers narrow win, but it'll be a struggle. Right, okay then. Not an upset. He, not an upset. <laughs> <laughs> but, not, but not an upset. Honestly, where's it going? Uh, dearie me. Um, bring back Charlie. Uh, anyway, uh, David Martindale reckons if there is going to be an upset, it's all about making sure they silence the crowd first. Take last night out of the equation, that doesn't really change. Whenever you go to Ibrox Parkhead, that's kind of part of the game plan try and frustrate, frustrate both teams, but um, Celtic and Rangers, sorry when you're playing them, but that also leads to frustration in the stands. Yeah, uh, that is the key to it all, is yeah. just 
get that whole 20 minutes out of the way, start to frustrate them. If you score a goal first, you know, Livingston are not exactly the type of team that you want to concede too early. No, you're right in that, you know, but they, they've got to do that. They've got to score, you know, because they'll be on the back foot. I would imagine I'll pick up the papers the next day and Rangers will have like 72% uh, possession in the game. And if, got, if they've got that, then Livingston will have to defend for their lives because there will be chances given and it depends whether Rangers take them or not. Yeah, you think Rangers are going to batter them? Yeah, I do. I think Rangers will score in the first 10, 15 minutes. Right. Big teams always, when they're under pressure, come up. Yeah. They always come up with I don't know how it happens, but they come up with it. Yeah. Everybody's ready to have a go at them. They don't always come up with it. No, them. but the majority of times they do when people start yeah. having a go at them. So you're saying they're going to batter Livingston? Yes, 3 0. 3 0. Yes. That's an emphatic yeah. decision there. Yeah. There's an edge to you at the moment, yeah. Ruffy. Just because you're in just because he's into the doubles tennis finals, he thinks he's he's back to the old uh, pundit that he used to be all those years ago. Um so you've gone three nothing. Tam thinks there could be an upset here, two one Rangers. Uh and I think Rangers <laughs> I think Rangers will win it one nothing. <laughs> Um, See, I, yeah. that, I, I genuinely think it's yeah. going to be a, t a tight game. Yeah, well, it's got to be a tight game because Livingston are well organised, play good football. Rangers at the moment not firing the way the fans want. Here's the bigger question on this. Even when you look at the games going up to the break, and they've got some, I think the European ones are going to increase the pressure on Geo. I think they're going to get battered by Napoli. I'm not too sure of what's going to happen by the time the permutations come in for the game at home against but Ajax. Ajax. It could be the dead, the dead rubber game, but those European performances, I think, have gone against Gio and not helped his cause, and not nobody's wanting to cut him some slack with the injuries. So, as you say, if he's under pressure, it, this next batch of games, you just wonder if there's one that breaks the camel's back. I'm not so sure, I, but would he be in charge for the old firm game in January I, 2nd? I think that there's, there's only one, one result, bad result away. I'm talking about domestically. I, th I don't think Rangers supporters expect anything really in the Champions League. But I think if you look back, it all stems from his comments after the Ajax game. When he said, you know, we, we, we can't compete at this level. I thought that a lot of Rangers supporters were really upset and angry at that. Yeah. yeah when he said they couldn't compete. Listen, you can compete with Ajax. You know, I think Rangers can compete with Ajax. I know they took their best player, but... I think, you know, I think you can compete with them uh, to, and to lose four and no one came out with that was basically waving the white flag in that whole group. Yeah. You know, we, 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 we don't belong here, we can't compete. So you may as well just, go, just putting them <coughs> down for six defeats in. There was a real lack of uh, ambition for, after one bad performance away at Ajax. Yeah. They just com he just completely written the Champions League campaign off for me. Maybe the, maybe the wording of it, maybe he could have chosen a, a better way to try and square up to the Rangers fans on the predicament they face. I don't think they can match Ajax financially at the moment, Ruffy. I think Ajax are in a stronger position than Rangers. Well, I don't know that the Ajax is, you know, financial. Well, they bought, they bought well, Rangers' they bought, best player. They bought players, so they must have a lot of money, you know. I, I, I just think teams like Rangers and Celtic should be the same as Ajax. They've, they've got owners. No, no, PSV. no, 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 that's not what Rangers I'm saying. Beat PSV. No, 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 you didn't listen to what I was saying. I said financially right now, Ajax are stronger than Rangers. Ajax are stronger than Rangers financially at the moment. If that was not the case, then Rangers would be able to go out and look and say to themselves, they bought seven players, they're stuck with a few ageing players, you know, they've let a few players go, two players significantly that I think weakened that team, and, and the others that they recruited, Rangers fans that I speak to are not happy with the recruitment process of players that were not automatic starters. I think, I think Ajax's academy is better, I think they're able to buy the best player Rangers had, and I think they've also been able to go out and recruit players that Rangers are not in the market for. As far as Celtic and Rangers being able to take them on a one-game basis, there's always that situation where that's possible, but not with the Rangers the way they're playing at the moment and the squad they have and the financial position, which tells me they are not in the market that Ajax are operating in at the moment. They're probably just below it. For me, Celtic and Rangers are Europa League sides. The joy for us is cut them some slack. They're in the Champions League. They know they've got to try and get used to it again. Yeah, I would agree with that 100%. You know, but when I saw the draw coming out, I said, no, Rangers, lucky if they get third. But when I looked at the Celtic group, I went, Celtic have got a chance of being second. Well, that, that's when uh, that's the way I summed it up, and uh, it, it's not going to happen, obviously. But uh, the thing about it is, we're saying that IX are far better financially. They've been getting thumped. 
living in thump to everybody in Europe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it's yeah, but, 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 but if we're talking levels here, Ruffy, I think Rangers and Celtic are Europa League teams. Yeah, that, I'm not going to argue with that. I've said that all along. When you see the quality of players that the likes of Leipzig and, and, and Ajax have got, yeah, I mean, Rangers and Celtic have improved themselves, but they've only improved themselves with Europa style quality. <coughs> they've, no, they've no improved themselves by signing Champions League players. Yeah, uh, Ronnie Porter, I think he's a Rangers fan, forgive me if you're not Ronnie, uh, says, I seem to remember you uh, obviously being a Rangers fan, I may be wrong, um, Peter, I honestly believe Gio's jacket is on a shiggly peg, if he keeps letting his players play the boring, frustrating way they are, Gio's in a bit of trouble, and I think that's the point that a lot of Rangers fans are, are hacked off with, Tom. Okay, for me, it all came for that comment after that game, a lot of Rangers yes. supporters were upset with that and angry with that after a, after a real doing, you know, in, in Amsterdam, you know, for nothing to come out and say they couldn't compete, you know, I thought was a p poor choice of words, and I think a lot, I think Rangers, uh, honestly, I think they've some of the players have no down tools, but I don't think they've, they've shown this, the, the belief that they can get anything from a Champions League. And that stems from your man. If your manager no, doesn't believe that you, 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 you can compete in that level, then why? How, how are the players going to believe that they can compete? And I think that's that's been the beginning of the, you know a wee bit of a downfall for Rangers. That game and those comments. Yeah, OK. Um, Ronnie says, Peter, I am a Rangers fan. So um, I think he's best placed and, uh, and echoes the sentiments of a number of Rangers fans that I've been speaking to who are there. As far as Celtic are concerned in their group, I think Celtic fans are more happy to cut Ange some slack, Ruffy, uh, than the Rangers fans are with Gio because they're watching they're watching good, entertaining football. I think, I think Celtic have been entertaining to watch, frustrating because they can't finish off teams in that final third. They've created so many chances. But I think the Celtic fans are happy with what they're watching and what Ange is trying to do. Yeah, I think they bought into him. They bought into him right for the start. And why wouldn't you? The style of football and the kind of player he's bought are exciting to watch. You know, I don't think there has been many failures, has there, really? Maeda maybe a wee bit, but of all his signings compared to some of the Rangers signings, who haven't really established themselves yet. They're coming in and getting out and getting injured and, and whatever. And, and the Rangers are definitely not the team they were in the Europa Cup final. Yeah. They're not as strong as what they were then. No, I don't think many disagreeing. I think it's going to be tight. one nothing. A couple of good bits of news for Rangers. Hadji in the last stage of recovery, according to Gio, um, and he reckons he's one of the most creative players at Ibrox. We will wait and see if he can get back to full fitness. He hopes to have uh, Conor Golson back in January. He's a huge miss, I think, for Rangers. Conor Golson mm. uh, in the league winning campaign, I thought he was the best player in the country. You know, in the, the COVID season, I thought he was outstanding. Rangers were unbeaten. He was a huge part of that miserly defence. I think he's a good player. Uh, I think he's a leader at the back, and I think Rangers are going to miss that. And maybe they're missing a voice on the pitch. They seem to be missing it the last couple of games. Nothing against Leon King, he's a talented young player, but. Just having that vocal presence uh, at the back, you know, organising. Uh, I think Rangers have missed that in the last couple of games. Yeah, um, Steve McNamara says Celtic need to beat Shakhtar on Tuesday and that will give us the hope for next season. Uh, and I think that's a, a fair assessment of things if they could beat Shakhtar Donetsk and then uh, people just head to Madrid to enjoy it, Ruffy. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, the fans are booked up anyway, yeah. so they're going to enjoy it. Yeah. Well, we're booked up for four yeah. days, Robbie. We're going to have a right good time. We certainly are. Wait a minute, you've got hospitality and everything. What more do you want to Liverpool? I don't want to be walking about Madrid. You'd... Oh, come on. Yeah. You said to me the other day, it's better with three. Say me now. Yeah. You said to me you should take me. Did, honestly, you're <laughs> such a... No, honestly, do you know what? He always says that to people when he knows they haven't. He yeah. does. Catch chance in hell uh, going. Do you still send postcards? Yeah, you can. Oh, we'll send the postcard, Ruffy. Oh, no, I've got your address. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. Uh, Kelly, Kelly against Ross County, Ruffy, is, um, well, Kelly, high as a kite, semi-finals, can't knock him for that one. You've got them relegated this season. Kelly, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, they're doing well in the cup, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> uh, but I still think they'll be there at the end of the day. Um, they've now lost 
Lafferty with no replacement so it'll be interesting yeah. to see how they go there well Danny Armstrong's playing well he yeah, scores, he's scored yeah. a couple of worldies roughly yeah he certainly is and uh, as Tom knows when you, you win a game and you're in the semi-final of comp the whole dressing room's mm. the, the part in the dressing room's great everybody's wanting a bit of it and you're desperate to get in there in the morning you're going to training you're enjoying every minute of it but you've got to keep winning games mm. you know and, <clears> on the other hand Ross County who I did predict for a top six <laughs> <laughs> really need to start picking up points and they'll they'll be like Livingston will be at Ibrox they'll, they'll be hard to beat they're, Malky have them organised but they're, they're definitely not the side they were before they lost these big players last year yeah there. so he really needs to grind out results and, and a point would be a good result for them at uh, Kilmarnock. Yeah, I did get a, I did get a message uh, from Jan Nastagi on you uh, and your whole attitude towards Ross County. <laughs> but it looks as if since you've backed them, they've hit rock bottom. <laughs> but I would not rule Ross County out of anything uh, at this moment, Tom, because even if they don't get something from this match against Kelly, Roy McGregor will back Malky in that window. Yeah, he always does that, doesn't he? He yeah. always they always bring in six or seven in January if they're, if they're struggling, even if they're going well. You know, they always try and one thing about McGregor is he puts his, his money where his mouth is, he backs the managers up there and uh, they'll do that again. But I'd fancy Kilmarnock strongly. I think I think I think they're hitting a bit of form at the right time. Yeah, just before the break at home, they should have a big advantage on that pitch. You know, we we've seen over the years, I can remember them firmly under Jimmy Calderwood <coughs> on that Astro. They were very hard to beat. I remember Hamilton Ackies in the Championship when I was at Dunfermline, unbeaten all season, won the Championship. I think when you've got an, a, an artificial surface at home, that is a huge advantage. You should be picking up the majority of your points on it. Peter, correct me if I'm wrong here. You're wrong. Did I pick up that in 2025, Holland, Holland yeah. are scrapping all Astroturf yep. parks? You cannot play in the, the Premier yep. League. They're ripping them all up. Yeah. They're ripping them all up. I, I, think, think, it that's the, I think that's the way ahead. Yeah, but what we'll have, uh, Ruffy, is the next uh, couple of years, you know, you'll have people coming out once it actually is forced. UEFA need to really enforce it. Mm -hmm. And I think what will happen then is you'll get a few pundits bleating on about it as if they've been saying it for years. The fact is, none of us have liked it since the start, Ruffy. No. None of us have liked it. It is terrible. It's embarrassing for this country. And Kelly's pitch and the rest of them have got them should be made to take them up. And let's get back. By the way, I was at Fir Park in midweek. What a surface that is, Tom. Mm. It was fantastic. Looked great. Aye. And it's got a little bit of the... There's a mix. It's a hybrid. It's a hybrid, yep. Uh, it was beautiful. There's nothing better than playing on grass. But I, I do think there is a role for AstroTurf and it's for training purposes. Yeah. I think for young kids, you know, for training, for passing, for technical work. You know, we do it at Braidhurst, nice, nice AstroTurf down there. Great for passing and technical work. But if you're, if you're talking top level and top level games, yeah. I think it's got to be grass. If you haven't got grass, you're not in the top level. Yeah, but, but I think they, they need some financial support from the SFA to rip it up. You know, because it's going to cost them money to rip it up and put the grass down. Well, well, I, think wait, somebody wait, did, wait, I think wait, somebody wait. did when yeah, the family did it first. They get something like a hundred thousand to, to yeah. try it. Out. So I think there will be some there'll be some help somewhere. Yeah, well, that was interesting. I'm not so sure there should be any financial support. You made the conscious decision as a business. If you want to come part of this group of people in the top flight. You have to abide by the rules. It's as simple as that. Um, I've got this one, Kelly to win one nothing, Ruffy. I've got Ross County to dig in and get a one each draw. 2-1 Kelly. Okay. Comfortable. 2-1 Kelly. Comfortable as well. When has there ever been a comfortable 2-1? But then again, it's been a mental day with the predictions and everybody having a real ding-dong battle with each other here. St Mirren against Dundee United, as ever. PLZ Soccer, we've got our reporters out there. Kerry was in Paisley. The St Mirren manager Stephen Robinson's next challenge awaits him tomorrow at 3 o'clock as Dundee United make the trip to Paisley. Currently sitting fifth in the Premiership table and on par with Celtic with the most clean sheets in the season, the Saints will be desperate to get back to winning ways. And with VAR making its debut, here's what the manager had to say. Yeah, it's going to be strange and even this week we are in training a couple of times we played 11 v 11 and some of the boys have stopped and appealed for decisions and you can't do that anymore, you need to play right until the whistle is getting reviewed in the background. Um, so it's going to be strange for everybody, halfway through the season as well, only in Scotland. Saints defender Marcus Fraser believes that with the added technology coming into effect this weekend, it will benefit the smaller teams the most. You hear a lot of the smaller teams, as you say, that don't get a lot of things at Celtic Park or Ibrook. So no, I think that is a, a good point, that everything's going to be clear. You know whether it's going to be a penalty or, or not. So I, I think things are a lot going to be clearer. 
I think a lot of players out with the big two will be actually relishing the fact that that kind of a feeling of injustice will be taken away from you know, certainly the majority of it if they're playing against the big two because I know that there's more than a few times where they think Celtic and Rangers get the, the favourable decisions. Yeah, because of the crowd. You mean the crowd size and the roar and, and everything like that. But no, you've still got to create these chances and I still think at the end of the day it'll be the big teams that will come out uh, favourable. Yeah? Yeah, I think they'll have. They'll be, they'll be the, the most... It'll be interesting at the end of the season to see who gets the most VAR shouts their way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think it will be in this country, which is at times in, in, Celtic in, Rangers, in, it, really? in need of help. Uh, thank you very much to so many people who I think are, I think if we were doing a quick poll, it's it's fairly high percentage of people who watch this program uh, and listen to it would suggest that the plastic pitches have to go. The amount of people on here are saying dig them up. It's just not uh, suitable for the top flight. There's a lot of them. Uh, so with that in mind, um, give us your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you on it. Uh, just a quick one there. That was Kerry out at St Mirren. She's been all over the place in the last couple of days, as has Adam. Um, and they're doing a great job. And Kerry obviously does the Saturday preview with yourself and, and Ruffy as well. Um, brilliant. No, they're coming on leaps and bounds. As I said, it's uh, it's great experience for them. You know, as, as young reporters to, to come in here and, and learn their trade uh, from yourself and the other people in here. So they are getting they are getting better every week. You can see the improvements, <coughs> and uh, long may it continue. Yeah, absolutely. And building up a wee bit of rapport, Ruffy. Now it's some age gap between you and Kerry. Certainly yeah, <laughs> is, but she's no friend to have a shout at us. Yeah. You know, if we don't get it right, you know, she's. Yeah, I have actually. Okay, <laughs> I have actually. I have. I have actually said to her. By the way, do not suffer anything from them. Batter the two of them. Um, you can see it on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. The preview with Kerry, uh, Tam, and Ruffy on the Saturday morning as well. Um, if you get a chance, download the PLZ Soccer app for all the breaking stories. And we are here. It's absolutely free to watch online. Thank you to so many of you who are subscribing as well. What did you have, uh, just out of curiosity, for St Mirren against Dundee United? I can't split them 1-1. Well, I, I went to St Mirren because uh, I think Dundee United are all over the place now. Obviously, the news that Charlie McGrew is going to be out for a wee while is a blow. They, they just don't seem to be firing in all cylinders. So I, I, I think St Mirren at home... I've been good value just now, so I think I've went for them to edge it 2-1. Yeah, I think I'm the same 2-1. Yeah, OK. Um, sorry, uh, I don't mind people who are pedantic and we don't mind getting caned, uh, which is fantastic. Paul Martin says, how can you dig up a plastic pitch? You roll it away. So, there you are. I'm going to have to tell you. After dig, can you dig it up? You need to dig it up at some point, mate. Yeah, I think you I think you can at some point in it. Uh, but no. but I, I'm, I'm willing to accept what Paul's saying. I think you roll the, the old stuff away, then you have to dig down and put a new surface in. I like the hybrid one, uh, Tam, and I, I think I think Celtics is a hybrid yeah, as well. Hearts as well. Hearts yeah, paid a lot of money for Hearts paid a million pounds uh, for the Hearts too. Paid a lot of money for theirs, so um, I think it's easier to maintain isn't it in the winter. With that little bit of uh, astroturf and with the natural grass. Absolutely. Uh, Norman says, PLZ on Saturdays, yep. And there's more big news on the way uh, with regards to lots of other uh, shows that will be coming on board in the new year, Ruffy. It's exciting times, especially you get rejuvenated when you get young reporters in there, more reporters coming on, covering more games uh, and going uh, to see the games. And, of course, there's... There's lots of other exciting programmes that we've got on PLZ. Well, well, I think the basic thing this year is we're now out and about. We're now picking the big games, you know, yeah. or European games. Madrid. You and Tam were at Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, we're going to Madrid for four days. Yeah. <laughs> Which is great, isn't it's it? Exciting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Which is fantastic. Uh, OK. <laughs> uh, Dundee United, just one little thing. Charlie Mulgrew was hoping to get back. He's out with a thigh strain. That's a blow for them. Charlie's experience. Yeah, that's a blow for him. I like uh, Charlie. He's a, he, aye, he's a, he, he's a good fella and he's a, he's a leader at the back. Good footballer, still got a lot to offer. So I think that is a blow uh, for Dundee United. And, you know, they'll need him, you know, behind the scenes to be, you know, leading the team as well. Here's the English Premier League fixtures if you are uh, a fan of English football. I'm a fan of English football. This is, after all, a football show. Nottingham Forest against uh, Liverpool. Everton, Crystal Palace. Man City, Brighton. Chelsea, Man United is a cracker as well. Of half five kickoff on Saturday. Wolves, Leicester. Aston Villa, Brentford. Southampton against Arsenal. It's Leeds, Fulham. Tottenham, Newcastle. And West Ham against Bournemouth. Unfortunately, 
Um, Ronaldo refused to come on as a sub against Spurs in midweek. He's been banished to the old training on his own. He's left out of the squad for the match against Chelsea. I'm going to take it in the neck for this one, uh, Ruffy. I thought they should have let him go in the summer. Um, I think the criticism, uh, I think Ronaldo has to take some criticism for that midweek, you know, mm. petulance. Mm -hmm. But boy, it, I, I'm, I'm just gutted the way it's ending for him at Manchester United. Yeah, there's obviously things going on behind the scenes. Uh, I, I don't know what the dialogue is when you're saying he wanted to leave. His body language looks as if he wants to leave. He, he doesn't want to be sitting on a bench. A player like no. that shouldn't be sitting on the bench. He should be out entertaining people. It's not his so, fault that Manchester United no, are rubbish. No, no. And, and right, and the manager... They're all, getting better now. Like, yeah, yeah. And the manager has obviously made decisions. But if he's given vibes, or his agent's given his vibes, that he wants to move, they should have let him move. Yeah, he'll go, he'll go in the January window. Um, but I think there weren't too many, um, you know, obviously looking, Tam, at the 28 goals plus that he scored last season that kept a mediocre Man United away from trouble. Yeah, I think he had a terrific season last year, but he's getting older now. And I think you've got to respect the manager. You've got to respect the way he wants to play. He yeah. wants to play with a higher tempo. He wants to play with more energy. And there's no, there's not a place in the team for Ronaldo in that, in that system. So I think it was really, really poor for him to walk down the tunnel. I thought it was disrespectful to the club and the players on the pitch. You know, it took all the focus away for a great result against Tottenham. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it, it, it put the focus onto him. If I'm Man United, if I'm the manager, I'm getting him out the door as soon as possible. He needs to, he needs to, he needs to go and you like let Ten Hag get on with. It. Yeah, I don't think he, I don't think he uh, plays as a player the way Ten Hag wants his team to play. But of course, if you are in a situation where basically you are going to show that petulance, especially when you're such an experienced player. You're going to suffer the consequences of every other player who steps out of line, according to the Man United boss. I, I set a warning in the start of the season, and then um, and the next time it has to be consequence. Huh? Otherwise, um, when you are living together, uh, when you uh, play together, and football is a team sport, huh? and so you have to fulfil certain standards, and I have to control it. I think he's right. I think yeah. he's getting it right with players who play a high press and it's maybe not Ronaldo's uh, game. There's quite a few people here saying maybe Ronaldo should go to Hibs. Um, quite a few people. Dan, well done, Dan. Um, that would be Ronaldo in a Hibs jersey. That would be good. McGeady on one side, Ronaldo on the other. Yeah, maybe get a bit of service into his bit. Oh. Yeah. Jenky be able to handle the fine. What fine? Ronaldo's fine. Two weeks, a million pound. I think he might. I think he, <laughs> I, was about, I was wondering, and I thought to myself, what is he getting fined at Hibs for? Um, he's like, <laughs> when I was doing it, doing it back in the couch. Yeah, I know, exactly. Um, he's, be, he's been a wonderful player, and I think it's a sorry just, end just to taint, it. Taint, he's, in it. I know, he's especially, like said, especially at United. And I think when Ronaldo hangs up his boots, I think there's a real case for a number of I know this is going to be slightly controversial, but I think there's a real case for a number of people looking and saying, he could make a real claim for being one of the greatest ever. If you know, mm. people will say, "Look at that boy's stats," and the game has changed so much from my favourite player Pele. Uh, it's even changed from the Maradona days. The physique, the commitment, the intensity, the medals. Um, you know, between him and Messi, winning Ballon d'Ors, he's got a real shout. And history, I think, will look back on Ronaldo and say. He, he should be considered as one of the greats, if not the greatest. I know that people will find that controversial, but you only have to look at his achievements. No, I would say one of the greats, you know, because you've just described there how every era has changed, but he's definitely one of them. There's no doubt about that. From club, whatever club he went to, he's done it. For his country, he's done it pff, tons of times, you know, in big, big tournaments. So, no, he's definitely one of them. Yeah, he's in the top five for me, Tam. I'm just slightly willing to take it in the neck because I've got it Pele, Maradona, you know, Messi, Cruyff, Ronaldo, or Messi, Ronaldo, I Cruyff. I think he's in the shake up the top four or five, but yeah. this, 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 you know, the way his, his career's ending will sour a few people against him. Yeah, absolutely. Sad end to it all. Um, Alan Wood says, and this is great, Mar Maradona's still the best ever. Um, so some people like him. Some people don't. Um, Hoggy says, Pele and Maradona wouldn't cope with the pace of today's game. Not fit enough. 
Mm, Hoggy, um, I don't know. I'm not so sure. I think the two players were absolutely sensational in their in their day. Maradona, he's yeah. peaking eighty six. Looked pretty fit to me. Yeah, you would even say Pele. If it was a modern day when Pele was playing, he would be fit, same as everybody else. Yeah. He'd be a modern day player. I think Pele was fit in the days. Yeah. When he was but playing, I think at I know what he means that yeah. they are super fit now. Their their body language and everything, now, yeah. or their body, their f- percentage of fat and all that stuff. Yeah, you see them. But if Pele was a modern day player, he would with his ability he'd be head and shoulders. Yeah, I think Philip Gage has, has nailed it. He says greatest all time. Only God knows that. Same as boxing, greatest of his era. You get a Messi, and then you get a, a Charlie Miller. Um, Thanks for that, Philip. <laughs> I don't know, he must be a Dundee United fan, uh, Philip, uh, remembering the great days of Charlie strutting his stuff. And fat um, Sams. Well, I have to tell you, you speak to Dundee United fans, they, they love Charlie Miller. Um, just one little thing before we go, um, which is Frank Ribery's retired Ruffy. Again, you know, an absolute quality player yeah. for club and country mm. as well. But it just shows you all you know, these players coming to the end of their career. Struggling but, with a knee yeah, issue at 39. Well, He's had least, a great career. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, at least we've witnessed it. It's another one. If you go on Sky or whoever, you get, you get that half hour of their best bits. Yeah. And he'll be on it as well. Phenomenal. Thanks to Tam. Thanks to Ruffy. Hit the subscribe button. Join the football family here. There's lots more coming. Great competitions on the way as well. Just ideally placed for Christmas too. Uh, Thank you to you uh, for sticking with us here. And hopefully you'll share it with your friends. Tell them all about it. Um, Kerry will be back tomorrow with Tam and Ruffy for the Saturday preview. Hopefully you can join them for that on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.